Hi, I'm Adi Sheppen with the Jed Foundation. Thank you for having me this morning, and thank you so much for this beautiful film. It means a lot to everyone at the Jed Foundation and all of the young people, the millions of young people that we represent, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure to talk to you. Yes, absolutely. Um, I actually saw the show um, at the Second Stage Theater. Wow. I saw you in it, oh, a wow. tiny little theater, early and days. Um, early days, wow. and fell in love with it and thought right away, oh, this is such an important film, and I would love for Jed to be connected in some way. Um, so I'm honored to be here. Um, I, I wanted to start with you, Ben, and you know, you've been a part of um, Evan, and Evan has been a part of you for so long. Um, can you talk a little bit about what what the role means to you and what you hope young people take away from this? Absolutely. I mean, on a kind of superficial, sort of personal level, I, the role has really changed my life in all ways. I think when I walked into the first ever cold reading that we did, um, which was the first time they had ever opened the script up, I didn't really know anything about who the character was. I had been asked to participate uh, and just kind of jump in and see what the synergy would be like without any prerequisite information. It was called the like Pasek and Paul and Levinson Untitled Project at the oh, time. Wow. Um, and so I opened it up and I was afraid of all of the things that I could and couldn't do. I was like, what if it's an accent? What if it's a, you know, this like <laughs> dashing, like princely guy, like all these things that I was like worried about. And then I opened it up and it was this like stream of consciousness, anxiety ridden, heart on his sleeve, like young person. And I just felt so immediately connected to it. And I yeah. felt so sort of like we had such a symbiotic kind of connection right off the bat and I think you know I have always had this dream of getting to do a role in a musical and create a character in a musical but to do that and have it have this kind of impact with someone that struggles with anxiety something that I have always had in my own life and have that be the platform on which it inspires young people it just felt like the ultimate gift because like any any musical is a dream for me I'm a theater nerd but to do something that can make an actual difference or that people can connect to on a level that is important to me personally feels very special and I think I hope that people take away from Evan whether or not they you know relate to him on any kind of obvious level you may not be outwardly anxious or sure. you know socially awkward or you might have a lovely group of friends or a family that you do communicate with well or but none of that I think exempts anyone from feeling at some time or another isolated or on the outside or in their own bubble, if you will, Absolutely. these last few years. And I think everybody has a piece of Evan in them. And I think when they see how deeply he struggles to connect and his deep, deep desire to feel seen and feel heard and have somebody that wants to hear what he has to say, I think it's impossible not to connect to that and, and hopefully not to feel slightly less alone when you see that. Yeah. Uh, and know that you can make very difficult mistakes and still be forgiven and still have redemption. Right. Um, so I guess I hope that young people feel that when they when they watch his story. For yeah, sure. absolutely. And to follow up on something you said, you know, um, for Alana, that is the unexpected, right? Like you don't you don't know that about her in the beginning um, that she too struggles with some of these issues. And I know the song um, Anonymous is a new song. It wasn't in the play. Um, and I understand that you co-wrote it, um, which is incredible. And so can you talk a little bit about, about Alana and that, um, that moment where she sort of comes clean to Evan, I think is such a powerful moment, especially looking on the outside for, for young people and for everyone to see, oh, it's not just this sort of stereotypical character, but, um, or what we may think stereotypically, you know, people with anxiety struggle with, but also this, sort of powerhouse character who then reveals that she too is going through things. Yeah, sure. Um, I feel like that was like, I, I was just the luckiest person as an actor to be able to have the freedom to kind of explore this character who's already like so hilarious and bright and um, to, to explore that character deeper and kind of figure out exactly how her like neurodivergence presents itself. Um, and I think that's the thing is that we all kind of struggle with some level of anxiety or depression, or generally speaking. I think sure. a lot of people do, you know, and it presents itself in so many different ways. Um, and sometimes it presents itself as someone who has, you know, an obvious difficulty connecting with other people. Sometimes it presents itself in a way where maybe you're overcompensating for the isolation that you feel by 
burying yourself into distractions and activities and because it's so hard to kind of just sit with yourself yeah. um, and that was something that I really related to with Alana um, and even reading her on the page like I remember just like fat teardrops like directly <laughs> onto the page um, just like getting it soaking wet um, because I you know I I think that we all struggle with feelings of isolation and that's kind of like the paradox and the trappings of, of neurodivergence in general is that it tells you that you are alone and that there is no way that you're going to escape that isolation, um, which just kind of becomes like such a self-fulfilling prophecy, right, you know? Right. And and so um, to, to be able to play a character who gets to kind of like be brave enough to kind of step outside of, of that of that internal voice and connect with someone else who's also going through that, like, yeah, it was so deeply gratifying and yeah. meant so much to me. Yeah. I love when she says, like, okay, I'll go first, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, because yeah. clearly, you know, Evan isn't going to, and it's sort of like, you could almost just let the moment skate by, but she says, no, I'll go first. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's uh, the two moments in the film for me that are, like, the greatest gifts to Evan is the when Amy Adams, who plays Cynthia Murphy, says, you know, we, we want to hear, when, when, the, when the dining room table, when he comes over for dinner and she expresses like that she really wants to hear from him and wants to hear what he has to say. Yeah. And that's such a gift, opening that door. And then the second one, that's kind of like the fulfillment of that idea is, as Alana really opening the door and extending a hand and saying like, I'm gonna make myself vulnerable so yeah. you can. Um, I think that's what so many people need and want, it's just yeah. that gateway. And hopefully Absolutely. the movie is that for a lot of people, I hope. Absolutely. Um, Stephen, I know that you also wrote The Perks of Being a Wallflower and directed the film. Um, it's one of my son's favorite books, oh. um, so thank you. Thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about your interest in this theme? I mean, obviously there are similarities in terms of a through line. Um, you know, what does this mean to you, this theme, and how, how did you become involved in this idea? Well, I, I, I think I very much, starting with The Perks of Being a Wallflower, I very much related to um, young people and their struggles with, you know, uh, whether it's it's depression, anxiety, or, or uh, you you name the issue. I mean, kids deal with all of it, right? Yeah. And if they don't deal with it directly, they they love or care about somebody who is dealing with something. Absolutely. And and um, so when I was younger, when I wrote Perks, I was 26. So uh, you know, I was. Oh, crazy! Yeah, <laughs> so it's crazy. amazing. Yeah, right. I know. So I was 26 and. So I felt very close. I mean, I was eight years away from high school. Yeah. So it was very, yeah. very. When I did the movie, it was slightly different. I was, I was, I was older than I was 41, 40, 40, 41, um, and I had to remember and I had to like go back. But it's amazing how, and as you know, as an adult, adults so often because because our stories are more written, like you know, where that crush or that or that moment or that experience is contextualized by years and years and years of of work, or you you meet your husband or your right. wife or whatever, and and suddenly the crush means less. But to the fifteen year old, it means everything. So I had to remember, like very respectfully, of of to see young people what they go through at, at eye level, and Dear Evan Hansen felt like a very natural uh, extension of every theme I've ever tried to do. I remember going to the studio and saying, look, I've, I've basically spent the last 20 years of my career making movies about young people and writing musicals. So I, I here we go. <laughs> I'm your guy. I, I, am, I am the prototype person, so please right. hire me. Right. And thank God they did, because I, I just, I loved, um, I loved the, the writing of it. I love what it was about. And, and I also thought that the film would give, give the story itself um, uh, an ability to wrap up in a way maybe the stage play couldn't. You can go into close-ups, you can see the grief or you can see yeah. the catharsis more up close and it was very exciting to do that because when you see it on stage, I mean Michael Greif directed a brilliant show and I'm a huge fan, I, 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 I love his work, but it's like if you're looking over here you're not seeing what Larry's going right. through. If you're looking over here it's a completely different right. experience every time you see it on stage and it was, I was very excited to be able to I guess kind of capture that lightning in the bottle. They made it very easy. And I will say what I love about this particular movie and what I love about this cast and these two uh, uh, exemplify this, which is I think about like years ago how um, 
Hollywood or actors or, or movie stars or whatever, everybody had to pretend they were perfect all the time. Like that was what, like the image factory right. was a thing. What is so exciting about their generation is, is they don't do any of it. Like they are themselves and they are authentic off screen, they are authentic on screen, and it was it was an absolute honor and such a genuine artistic pleasure to watch them um, turn these performances into some form of autobiography. Yeah. That always excites me. When a person can tell his, her, their story um, with authenticity, that's how I believe that you know that you're not alone. And I encourage all of your members and all the kids who see this movie to do exactly that. Because yeah. as, as, the, as the words say, be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was listening to the music again recently, and I felt like you will be found. In, in my head, I was sort of thinking, like, a, it's, a, it's almost like I am seen, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, yes. I, somebody sees me and my experience and what I'm going through. Um, and there's such power in that. And whether it's about mental health or racial diversity or whatever it is, this idea that somebody sees you is such a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask about the role of social media. Um, you know, it's such an, it's, it's almost its own character in some ways. Um, it's such an important part of the film and, and there's sort of this double-edged sword to it, which I think is really true in real life too, right? Mm -hmm. Especially we saw during the pandemic, you know, in many ways, that's what kept people connected, mm -hmm. um, and yet there's this other side of it where you can sort of, you know, get into the negative and go down the rabbit hole. And mm -hmm. you know, for for any one of you, you know, what do you, what are you, your thoughts about the the social media piece of the film and and what it means? I think, as you said, I think it really nicely shows both sides of the coin. I feel like there's obviously in the You'll Be Found sequence and, and in moments in the film you see how unifying it can be and how it can make people who don't have a community or a, a home where they actually are find one online and find other people that are like-minded and feel part of something larger than themselves, which I think is a savior, particularly as you said in the pandemic, was a huge savior for a lot of people, I think. But at the same time, it is also a black hole <laughs> and a terrifying, terrifying place to be where people grab a little nugget of information with no context and no work to understand where someone's coming from or who someone is and just absolutely start to kind of go nuts and really rail on them. And um, I think it, it, it's about a personal choice of how are you going to interact with it, how are you going to try to mine it for what's good and use it for what's positive and be very also wary of the, the pitfalls and not try to seek validation or sort of human, uh, the, the entirety of the human connection that you find in your life can't come from, from online, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, um, I almost feel like a little, like, forlorn sometimes for like the younger generation, like younger than me even, because they won't necessarily be able to experience coming of age without um, like self-branding. Like that is just kind of an inherent so part of being a young person now is is understanding how to present yourself publicly, even if you aren't, you know, necessarily on a public platform. Right. Just it's just how we communicate with each other now because social media is is our world, and sometimes I kind of resent that a little bit. Um, but sometimes, or us, what what we were trying to kind of speak to in the song that we wrote. Um, was that despite kind of those public presentations that we've gotten so good at maintaining that there's always deeper layers to people or things that you're not seeing about them or understanding about them or there's parts of them that you probably could connect to um, if you just kind of dropped drop the facade for a sec. Right, which is um, so hard to do, right? Which is yeah. really hard, <laughs> which is really hard. But what I also love about Gen Z is there's this kind of like inherent nihilism that's like really funny. Like every, <laughs> everything is just like dripping in sarcasm, but like <laughs> underneath that sarcasm is also this like really heartfelt um, like ability to express what they're going through especially when it comes to mental health. Yes. Um, and so that's really exciting to me. I think it's like awesome that it's becoming normalized to have these conversations. And yeah, I hope that, that this film 
um, can feel like a space to continue having that conversation. Yeah, it's definitely the most um, open and accepting generation in so many ways. Um, and the stigma, you know, sort of the classic stigma that we think about, the shame and secrecy and prejudice around mental health issues, it just isn't there in the same way in this generation. You know, and they're so open in terms of like, I'm going to the dentist today. Oh yeah, I'm going to my therapist tomorrow. You know, things that certainly at my age, like we don't think about saying out loud, you know. Um, so I agree with you, I love that. It used, to, it used to be a family shame, and right. now it's not. Right. It's remarkable what, yeah. what it's done. Yeah, and you know, continuing to talk about it and having a platform like, like this movie, um, I think is going to make an even bigger difference. Um, not only because it will spark conversation, but it's just, it's there for everyone to see and engage with in different ways. Um, and that's what it's all about, you know, talking about it, connecting with friends over it, making you think, oh, you know, is my friend okay? Should I reach out? Like this, this sort of made me think about it or that kind of thing. Yeah. I, if, really if I wanted to add one thing about social Please. media, they have a completely different perspective on it than, than, than um, my friends here, is that is that because, I mean, I grew up, you know, I came of age way, I mean, before, honest God, the internet, you know what I mean? I mean, it didn't Same. even exist, right? <laughs> and and not that that, that that was better or whatever, I mean, I don't know how the hell we found it, where to go. I don't even know, <laughs> I don't even know what a map is anymore. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, what? How the hell did we ever meet right? each other? Right? Anyway, it, it is remarkable. It did happen. I swear to God, there was a way. To, we'll meet at eight o'clock, and you actually were there. It's fantastic. But um, but I will say, is it, my perspective is having grown up without it. Not that obviously young people are because I made the movie in part to understand social media for my kids who are six and nine now, and and I'm trying to help be part of the solution to maybe make the world they're about to enter adolescence a little better. Um, I will say that uh, there's a great old say, saying that uh, what people think about you is none of your business. You know what I mean? And and not that uh, I'm not I'm not going to be like the middle aged guy that's like you know this is wrong how we're doing this. Not at all. What I will say is it is a choice. All of it is a choice. And I can't tell you. Uh, I used to be quite active on some things, and then I made this movie, and then I just like I just stopped because I realized that the people whose opinions or approval of me that I really care about, I actually know. I can mm -hmm. talk to, I can hug, I can say hello, we can have lunch. And, and again, the powerful part of it is knowing that you are a part of something that's bigger, that you can be public about, whether it's mental illness or, or whatever group you belong to, and that people know that they're not alone that way. Right. Because there was a lot of isolation before this information was out there. I do remember that very well, it was terrible. People were closeted everywhere in, in all capacities. Yeah. Now, not so much, which is fantastic. But like past that, it's just like, it is okay to do this. And life will not be over if you do, even for an hour. Yeah. Just to know that you are bigger than it. Just always remember you're bigger than it. Absolutely. Oh, yes. yeah, I think that's really powerful. Yeah. It's true. Well, thank you so much for your time. I so appreciate it. Sure. And um, thank as you for does what everyone you do. at Jed. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah. Thanks.